Hey guys, Grumpy here with Ship Showcase, a series where we focus on unique, powerful, interesting builds. In this episode, we're actually going to focus on two ships, that being the Onslaught and then the Tempest. Um, these ships synergize very well together. Um, they're very effective and just elevate each other's um, power on the battlefield. So focus on Onslaught first. Um, typically, what I use the Onslaught for is for uh, punching a hole in the enemy fleet. Um, this is a very effective wedge, and what what I mean by that is um, it'll destroy whatever its eliminate target is, and while it's working on its eliminate target, it'll start doing damage to the adjacent ships that are next to it due to these um, weapon systems being on turrets. Um, it has no problem firing at the, the 10 and 2 o'clock positions. Um, so very effective um, in kind of like a V-shape. And what will happen is eventually um, the enemy ship, uh, the enemy fleet will be broken in half so you'll have a, a small a small group of ships to the left the far left of the onslaught and a small group of ships to the far right of the onslaught at which case the rest of your fleet can move in and um, start to deal with these smaller groups of ships um, because of course you typically what you'll target is like a capital ship or, or a cruiser that'll be removed um, from the fight so you'll just be dealing with smaller ships on either side so frigates and destroyers uh, easy to mop up. Um, so with that in mind, the way it's designed is it has its thermal pulse cannons. Um, so the front is pretty much taken care of already. I added additional high explosive damage in the form of heavy maulers. Um, and then also, uh, there's a lot of uh, point defense uh, fragmentation damage in the front here. Um, throughout the fight, this will be anti-fighter, anti-missile weaponry. But in the initial charge, when your um, onslaught is burning into a target, when it's like closing the distance, uh, these will do a lot of damage once the shield and armor has been stripped away, um, and quickly eliminate um, whatever that ship is in front of it. So very, very, very nice there. Uh, on the sides, um, in the large and the medium slots, we have high explosive damage. Um, the reason you want high, uh, you want a lot of high explosive damage. I um, mean, you want to prioritize high explosive damage in your your bigger armaments, is because of the way armor reduction, armor damage reduction works. Um, basically, if you use something like um, a light assault gun or like a light mortar, these do a, a tiny, insignificant amount of damage to armor. The yes, it does high explosive damage, but for the most part, that damage is just going to splash away, um, and it's not going to be nearly as effective as something like a hellbore cannon, which does. 1500 damage to armor each time it hits um, You're very 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 quickly going to strip away an opponent's armor if you hit them with a couple of hellbore uh, cannon rounds um, So for that reason the smaller weapons are going to be kinetic. That's fine um, And then also on the rear I went with the hyper velocity driver. I could have also went with a um, With a heavy mauler but I felt the hyper velocity driver just being on the flank um, really helps keep ships away. Um, being able to keep their hard flux up really discourages them from approaching the onslaught and getting near the, the flank of the ship. And then as far as missiles go, I went with Typhoon Reaper launchers. Um, these are just devastating weapons, but because there are four of them, you know, spam is an option. You can pick whatever you want to go in this slot. Um, other good choices are surprisingly proximity charge launchers. Uh, Annihilator rockets are also good. Uh, I haven't tried breaches, but I suspect they would be okay as well. Um, sabos, of course, harpoons, of course. Um, so pretty much very flexible here in the missile slot. Uh, it's up to you. And then as far as the weapon groups go, uh, this looks a little confusing, but um, the basically the way it works... Uh, the way it's broken down is um, everything on the left side is on an odd channel. Everything on the right side is on an even channel. Um, so the Hellbore being on the left side is on channel 3. Uh, this Hellbore being on the right side, you can tell by the arc, uh, is on the uh, channel 4. Um, same thing, Heavy Mauler, left side, channel 3. Uh, heavy Mauler, right side, channel 4. I also split the point defense, which is not necessary, uh, but I went ahead and did that. And then the missiles get their own channel. Um, the Reapers aren't alternating because you don't need to fire them linked. That's That would be pretty overkill and you'll end up missing a lot of shots. 
Um, so just alternating is, is perfect. Uh, everything else is linked though. Um, and then moving on to hull mods, we have heavy armor and integrated targeting unit built in. Um, heavy armor, of course, to make it tankier. Integrated targeting unit to just maximize the range and effectiveness of the onslaught. Uh, advanced turret gyros is really nice, especially on those faraway targets. You're going to be able to line them up a lot quicker and uh, start putting shots on them. Uh, and then hardened shields for better shield flux for damage. Resistance flux conduits. Uh, for faster venting and then expanded missile racks is because we use typhoon reaper launchers i didn't build this in even though it costs more op than integrated targeting unit is because um like i said the missiles are flexible so i didn't want to commit to expanded missile racks in case i was using something like um, annihilator rockets which have a lot more ammo and uh, therefore don't really need expanded missile racks um, if you want you can build it in of course if you know what missiles you're going to commit to um, me, I just didn't want to make that commitment. Uh, but that's the onslaught. Moving on to the Tempest. Um, the Tempest is a phenomenal support ship. Uh, that's the role it serves in this. Um, uh, when when I use them in tandem, long range support ship uh, coming from the beam weapons and then advanced optics and integrated targeting unit, uh, really able to cover a lot of ground with these beam weapons. Uh, ideally, I wanted to use two ion beams, but through testing, what I what I realized is um, the beams tend to converge on the same point of the ship, which is uh, really bad. Um, basically, the way ion beams work is they knock weapon systems and engine drives offline. Um, so you really want to coat, like um, you really want to swing the the beam across the ship. Like you want to sweep the ship with the beam. And the AI just doesn't know to do that, so it'll focus on one part of the ship. So you'll constantly, you know, knock um, the front of the ship offline, but the engines will still go. But if it was in the, the player's hand, you could put one beam on auto fire, target the front of the ship, and then have one beam target the back of the ship. Um, so because the AI doesn't know to do that, I ended up just opting for two different beams. I went with the Graviton Beam just to keep uh, kinetic pressure up at a distance. Um, but, you know, if the AI was smart enough to sweep the beams across the ship, then of course I would go with two ion beams. We also have a Salamander here for incidental um, flame outs. Doesn't always hit, but it is nice when it does happen. Um, and then mods, extended shields and shield conversion front just to get a better shield arc. Uh, these do spend a lot of time near the capital ship, so they draw a lot of fire. So just trying your best to protect them on all sides is um, is uh, really beneficial. Uh, oh, yeah. The reason these are really good support ships also is because they have two Terminator drones. Each Terminator drone comes with point defense. So you end up with uh, two, point two point defense lasers per Tempest that you deploy. Um, so if you deploy two Tempests, you get four. If you deploy four Tempests, then you get eight point defense lasers. Um, very effective against um, missiles and against fighters. So really good at protecting the uh, the flank of your capital ship. Um, but with all that covered, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate this. Uh, so we'll go ahead and deploy two Tempests. Uh, I give them the escort order on my onslaught. And then... Uh, before reductions, this costs 40 and these cost 8, so this is about 56 points worth of um, deployment. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give the enemy uh, the same thing. So we'll go ahead and give him that. Uh, we'll give him a carrier. Um, you know, let's give him one more ship. Uh, so we're going to get 65 points of deployment. Uh, no, <laughs> let's not do that. Uh, these ships are good. They're not that good. We'll go ahead and give them a cruiser. Uh, so what I'll do is I will sit on the missile channel and I'll go ahead and manage that. And I'll give the eliminate order. Even though I'm piloting all the onslaught, I'll give the eliminate order on the uh, on the dominator here. Then we'll go ahead and burn in towards our target. Focus it with the R key. And then go ahead and start making short work of it. 
the Tempests are going to go ahead and cover our flank here. Um, also, you see the Ion Beam um, already making work, or it's going to start shutting down these uh, these missile systems, so we don't have to really worry about you know getting our flank shot. Uh, this uh, Tempest is well, its Ion Beam is targeting on the Dominator, which is interesting. It'll probably switch over to this Hammerhead, and because um, we're able to flux. Uh, ships that are adjacent to the Dominator really effectively, the Ion Beam will start to shut down these weapon systems as well. Um, so really nice there. Go ahead and fire the Reapers off. So this would be um, kind of the effectiveness of the onslaught. So now you have um, the main target, whatever it is, if this was a capital ship, it's down. Um, you would move the rest of your fleet in at this point, or the rest of your fleet would already be working on these smaller ships. Um, I'm going to just rotate the, the onslaught and pick off the rest of these targets. I'm actually going to vent while we have a chance here. The onslaught being so tanky, it you know has no problem uh, shrugging off those harpoons. We're gonna go ahead and close the distance with burn drive and uh, bully these destroyers. <laughs> But uh, you see the effectiveness of the onslaught. The tempest, I wasn't really focused on them. Um, I'm gonna. S oh, actually, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, the tempest, I wasn't really focused on those during the fight, but um, they were doing a really good job of just covering our flanks. Um, so we never really had much to worry about there. to this enforcer. Oh nice. I missed both of those reapers. I'm still working on um, being more effective with my reapers. Uh, that's something that I just need to practice. Anyway. We can go and give them the harass command. On the hammerhead, just keep it in place, uh, keep its flux up, and we can go uh, attack it a little later. But anyway, that's a demonstration of uh, of the onslaught. It is also, of course, effective against capital ships. Um, I just picked the Dominator because that would be a nice short fight. I need to like lead the Reaper. There we go. Uh, of course, it is ca uh, like I said, it is effective against capital ships. Um, so, yeah, let me give you the eliminate order. So definitely, you can, um, you know, use it in that scenario as well. I'm gonna go ahead and pilot this. And we're gonna go ahead and sneak around here. We're gonna put the Solomon in our auto fire, take manual control of the ion beam. And this is what I'm talking about. The beams converge on the same point of the ship, um, which isn't really what you wanna see. Um, we're gonna move around and get that uh, flame out. And uh, yeah, that's it. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that demonstration. Um, I, I did uh, 50 and 50, well, 65 and 50, uh, just to demonstrate um, it on a small scale. Obviously, it would be scaled up. Your fleet wouldn't contain only an onslaught and two Tempests. Um, but that does just demonstrate that the effectiveness of these ships cooperating with each other. The onslaught protects 
the Tempest. The Tempest protect the Onslaught. Um, really nice there. Um, so go ahead and give it a try. I especially recommend the Tempest um, as long range support. I found this really effective. Um, they also work really well with uh, escorting the monitors that I demonstrated in the first episode of the series. Um, they just provide an additional source of defense um, for those monitors. You know, they don't really need it, but um, being able to have ion beams just like towards the front of the the uh, the battlefield is just really nice because when the rest of your fleet shows up, you're just picking off a bunch of um, disabled ships. So nice there but anyway hope you guys enjoyed that demonstration um give it a try S tell me what you think of this um if you do end up using these ships just let me know how it goes um other than that grumpy out